This is a review for a Digitech DT2843R multimeter. This is a fairly inexpensive multimeter. This is uh, a true RMS AC plus DC multimeter. Um, it has typical specs for a multimeter in this price. We are dealing with uh, in the basic DC voltage accuracy 0.5%, uh, AC 0.8%, and then up to 1% error as you get into the higher voltages. On the DC current, 1.5%. On the low current ranges, on the high current ranges, 2%. These are plus 5 digits. 2% on the AC and 2.5%. On the resistance measurement, 1% plus 2 digits, that's pretty good if it matches its spec. At 40 meg ohms, we are dealing with 2%. On the capacitance, typical for multimeter in any price range, 3 to 5% is in uh, accuracy until we get up to the 400 and 4000 microfarad ranges where we have 20% plus 20 digits. So at these ranges you basically are getting into just checking whether or not you have a capacitance. And we have our frequency range of 1 to 1 hertz to 10 megahertz. It will measure, measure uh, duty cycle and we have temperature measurement. Now uh, you also notice it has CAT3 600 volt, CAT2 1000 volt ratings, but uh, if you look on the multimeter here, uh, I'll show you a close-up later, it says CAT3 600 volt on the voltage input and on the current input jacks rated only for 250 volt, but at least both of them are fused. So technically this does not meet the current CAT rating uh, specifications or requirements on the current CAT ratings. Every jack must meet this, the highest voltage and CAT rating as far as safety goes. We'll have a look inside later and see why, why it's that way. Um, now this multimeter did not come with leads because this was a sample sent to me by Frankie Tong. Uh, he's going to be selling these multimeters on his eBay store, 99 Cent Hobbies. Frankie is also a member of the EEV blog forums and he goes by the name of I Love Electronics on that forum. So let's uh, do a little quick comparison here between another popular multimeter and the Digitech. This multimeter, the UT61E, is a, it's a nice multimeter. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive. Frankie's going to be selling this multimeter, the Digitech, for $46 US shipped anywhere in the world. And he sells this one for $58 shipped anywhere in the world, if I remember the price correctly. So let's turn this on so you can see a comparison of the displays. You'll see that the Digitech has a nice clear display with nice big numerals, easy to see, and I would put it at basically the same quality of display almost as the Unities. Unities always seem to have very nice displays, if uh, nothing else, in their multimeters. The uh, selection dials uh, well, on the Unity, it's a little bit better than the Digitech. But the Digitech has a nice feel. It, you can put it in the middle of selections if you try, but it's not that easy to do. You have to think about it to get it into the wrong place. Another thing to notice is that the input jacks on the Digitech have colored inserts so that you can see which jack is common, which are the, the uh, input jacks much more easily than on the Unity. I don't like this cheap way of doing it, just one color and then putting some silk screen to try to indicate which ones are which. The selection buttons for different functions here have uh, the, the normal type of carbon pad that touches the circuit board when you're trying to do, uh, when you're trying to make the contact, but the tops of the buttons have a hard plastic cap on them as opposed to these rubber types here. The uh, advantage to this to me, for especially for a cheap meter, is that uh, over time as you're using these buttons, these letters will get worn off, but here you're only touching the button and not touching the letters, so these buttons should last a little bit longer. You will notice that the meters are slightly different in size. This one's a little bit smaller, uh, 
built basically as strongly, if, if uh, you ask me, they weigh approximately the same, so there's really no advantage in the smallness of it. But anyway, so we're going to put this aside because I can't really do any more real comparisons between the two with this multimeter. I blew this one up uh, trying to do some high voltage torture tests with it. So let's put that aside and let's have a closer look at the Digitech in general. So you'll notice uh, it has two off positions on the dial here. I think that's just the wasted extra bit of engineering and space on, on there. If having an off position on one side doesn't really matter to me one way or the other. Uh, we have um, all the general functions that you would want on a multimeter. Voltage, AC, voltage, DC, ohms, capacitance, diode test, continuity, uh, temperature measurement uh, in degree C and Fahrenheit. We have frequency measurement, all the different current ranges, and you can also select uh, a backlight, which the UT61 does not have. So there's a, it, the backlight is okay, it's usable, it's not uh, beautiful, but it works. Um, this has a relative function. Uh, obviously this is an auto range multimeter so you can also select your ranges manually. It has a min and max function and a hold button also with the where the backlight button is. You hold it down to get the backlight or you just touch it to get the hold. Now the hold is just a, a normal touch the hold button and it saves the, or freezes the display which really isn't that much use but it's there. Um, now the overall construction of the multimeter, it's very strong. It's very difficult to make it creak. Um, there's a little bit of a gap here with the where the two halves come together, but that's not a big deal. The uh, back of the multimeter has uh, the battery door here and a tilting bale. Now one thing about the battery door that I'm not very impressed with, it's not that big a deal, but um, you can see, let me get this closer to the camera, let it focus. You can see the battery door moving. Let's see if I can get it there. That's because on the battery door here, we only have this screw holding it in. There is nothing else holding this or clipping this into place here. So this has a little bit of movement, so that makes it feel a little bit cheaper than it could. Um, it only has hard plastic points on the back here, so when it's lying down, it does move around a little bit easy, more easily than uh, it could, but with a little bit of pressure, it doesn't move around when you're moving the dial around. But yes, if you just were to try to move it without putting any pressure, it does slide around a little bit. The tilting bale is actually quite nice in my opinion. Uh, it has a nice flat base on it. The back of the multimeter is fairly flat here, so when you put it up on the tilting bale to use it, it's fairly stable. It's uh, you have to put a little bit of pressure to keep it moving around, but it still stays in, in position. And the big thing is, is yes, you can push the buttons without it falling over. This particular multimeter did not come with any leads. Uh, it was just a sample sent to me by Frankie. Uh, it came with no leads, so I'm going to use the ones that came with the UT61E. They're approximately the same quality as what is going to be supplied with the multimeter. Uh, the leads and the temperature probe will be the same ones as what Frankie sells on his eBay store with his tech power multimeters. So yes, this will come with a fairly uh, decent set of leads and a really nice temperature probe for the price. So anyways, let's have a look at the accuracy of this multimeter. So using my DMM check here from voltage standards, let's check the 5 volt range. And yes, it's one significant digit out well within spec on that. Let's check the resistance measurement. The first resistor I have here is 999.7 ohms. A little slow to auto range, but it's not too bad. And it's well within specification there. The next one is 9,999 ohms. And within spec again, next one is 99,990 ohms. 
and that's well within spec also. So let's check the current measurement accuracy. You can see that I have the test lead plugged into the current jack here and it's still on the ohm selection and there is no input jack warning so that's something you don't expect at this price range anyways but just to know that it has no input jack warning if you put the connection in the wrong place so let's put it on microamps and let's have a look at the accuracy on this one milliamp source on the microamp range and it is only one count out out of a thousand so that's well within spec. Let's put it on the milliamp range. Check that again. And it's less than 1% out on the, or it is 1% out on the milliamp range, which is well within spec also. So let's have a look at the continuity test. Uh, one of the problems with multimeters in any price range is they can have very terrible responses on the continuity test and this one's no exception this is one of the worst I've seen very very slow uh, let's compare it to something that has what I would consider perfect instant response although it's not latched I, I prefer not latch it's not a big deal to me but some people prefer latch but this is what a good response should be on the continuity test instant this one's not latched you can hear it scratchy but at least you can hear things instantly when you're dealing with a continuity test as slow as this one and you're trying to do a continuity test on many connections it's going to take you forever here we are going to see how the digitech compares to the bryman as far as accuracy goes on some ac measurements i have the bryman set on the millivolt AC range here, but you can see that on the Digitech, I only have to select volts AC because this auto range is all the way from millivolts all the way up to its top range without having to switch anything. I have a uh, function generator here running with a, uh, a capacitor in series so that we remove any possible DC offsets in the, my function generator. And let's see how it compares in accuracy. So you can see right at the bottom end of what I can output on my function generator there, well, the Digitech's well within spec compared to the Ryman. Let's crank it up a bit. Uh, 200 millivolts uh, within specification again. Let's crank it up a little bit more. Get as high as we can here on the Ryman or up into the upper range of the Ryman on the millivolt range. And again, the Digitech is staying well within spec on that. So to go any higher though, I need to switch the Bryman into the volts AC out of the millivolts AC, but I can leave this alone. It will auto range completely. So I'm going to turn off the attenuator on my function generator and we'll crank it up to a couple of volts here. You can see how fast the Digitech responds. It has a nice update rate on its display around three times a second. Not as fast as the Bryman, of course, but very fast. One thing you need to remember is that the Digitech is always in AC plus DC true, R true RMS mode. You cannot select anything else. This one is just in RMS mode without the AC plus DC. But let's do something here. Let's select this to go to AC plus DC true RMS and let's compare the update rates again between the two. I think you'll be surprised. The Digitech is faster than the Bryman, which I was surprised. It gets to its readings much faster than the Bryman does. So I think that's a very good point in the favor of the Digitech. Now you'll notice by the way that I have also a resistor across here. That was for when I was testing the millivolt ranges just to get rid of some noise down on the bottom end uh, changes the the readings a little bit but they, the Digitech still is well within uh, its specification on these these ranges and these frequencies by the way I'm only running at 60 Hertz right now so let's uh, take the dial up here to 200 Hertz and let's see how the Digitech responds no problem at 200 Hertz okay down to 20 Hertz no problem, 
it's still within specification. Let's take it even lower. I still take this to 200 hertz, take it down even lower. So we're at 20 hertz again right now. And it says it's supposed to go down to 1 hertz. So let's take it down. That's 10 hertz. Starting to go a little bit out on accuracy. As we get lower and lower, down to 6 hertz. 2 hertz, you can see it starts to lose its mind. So at these, at, at 1 volt, or sorry, 2 volts AC, it's not holding on. If I crank up the voltage a bit, that still doesn't work very well down at 2 hertz. Let's take it to 50 measurement and let's compare it against the Ryman. At 100 Hertz they agree 100%. 1 kilohertz agree 100%. 10 kilohertz no problem. 101.4 they both see the same thing. 1 megahertz and we'll go to the top range of my function generator here around 2 megahertz. And you can see the Digitac holds on very well all the way through. Here is a comparison of how the Digitac does on true RMS plus DC compared to the Bryman. So I have the function generator direct coupled right now, no capacitor in line. And down at the bottom range, you can see that they are agreeing completely. So let's uh, start cranking in some offset turned on my offset adjust and again the Digitech is faster getting to its reading than the Ryman and we'll turn up the offset a little bit in one direction and again the Digitech is within spec let's turn it back the other way down oops I went too far and overloaded the Ryman remember the Ryman will not auto, auto range out of the millivolt where this is only only has to be in one position you can measure it from millivolts up to thousand volts basically yeah so the digitech looks like it's still hanging on in accuracy okay let's go to measuring in the volt range ac plus dc true rms and i'll turn off my attenuator on my function generator and you can see the Digitech seems to be within specification. Let's start cranking up the voltage here. And we have some, let's turn the AC voltage down a little bit and then we'll put some more offset in here. So cranking in some offset and the Bryman takes a while to think about it. The Digitech gets almost directly there, so I think that's a pretty good response and pretty good performance out of the Digitech on that part. Uh, let's measure, measure the AC current next. Okay, here is a comparison of the current measurement at the microamp range using AC only. Again, I have a DC blocking cap in series with my function generator. You can see right down at the bottom of what I'm capable of putting through here reliably, we have pretty good agreement between the Digitech and the Bryman. Let's crank up the current a little bit. And again, pretty good agreement. Basically up to the top of the range of the Bryman. You can see the Digitech auto ranges. Okay, so let's switch into the milliamp and see how they compare. I need to select AC on here. A little bit of a difference there. But I would say that the Digitech is still within specification on this. Let's crank this up. Still down in the milliamp range here, so we get it up as high as I can get on this attenuator setting. Okay, okay, I'll crank it back down, turn the attenuator off on my 
function generator and let's get it up into the higher ranges here on the milliamp and you can see the Brima just auto ranged it looks like the Digitech might be right at the edge of its specifications but it's very usable as we get higher up 100 milliamp very close let's go right to the top of the range I can produce here and yes the Digitech is still within specification there so that's pretty good for the current measurement range now that is with an AC or sorry DC blocking capacitor in series with the with the function generator let's take that out and let's measure the true RMS with DC and AC so I need to select here so this is now on equal footing with the Digitech in that it's measuring DC and AC at the same time like I said you have no choice with this one it always is doing the same so yes they agree pretty close uh, let's take it back down a bit so I can throw some DC offset into here and we'll throw some DC offset into the current range and let's crank that up a little bit and of course the Digitech outspeeds the Bryman again but yes you can see there they are reading well within spec of each other another feature of the Digitech is that you can see that you can also measure when you are, are on the voltage range you can measure frequency and duty cycle while you're selected in voltage now let's switch it to Hertz uh, we can see that they're agreeing we, we already measured uh, the Hertz response or the frequency measure, measurement response let's check uh, how it does in duty cycle compared to the Bryman so let's start playing with the duty cycle here and see what we get yeah everything looks pretty good there close agreement let's invert and crank it back the other way yeah everything matches on the duty cycle no problem so the Digitech has a measurement for temperature so does the Bryman let's do a comparison here you can see when I have the Digitech selected to temperature measurement without any input it will show its internal reference and you can see it's a couple of degrees out compared to the thermocouple measurement with the Bryman let's take the thermocouple and move it over to the Digitech and you can see that it is agreeing with the thermocouple measurement that the Bryman has now this thermocouple is the the uh, the probe that comes with the Bryman I did not get one with the Digitech but it's actually a little bit better quality than this one so yes the Digitech measures temperature correctly you can also change it to Fahrenheit if you wish and um, I haven't shown the min max yet so let's do that let's turn on the max right now it's showing 73 degrees maximum Fahrenheit I'll leave it there just to bother people who don't like Fahrenheit and we plug in the probe it says 86 was the maximum it saw I'll put my fingers on here get that going up if I can there we go 87 88 go to min you can see the minimum that it saw was 72 but you see there is no live update so if you want to get out of this you need to hold this down until it goes back to the real-time measurement but it will show you a min and max at least one annoying drawback on this Digitech is that it does not auto range after you do a relative function or remove an offset so here we have my resistance substitution box it has a residual um, residual resistance of around 0 0.3 ohms there we have it showing there so we'll take that out by pushing the rel button and there's a little bit of noise in the room that's what's making it jump around and we'll select one ohm here and with one ohm yes we get our one ohm let's select 11 ohms 
that's well within spec of course let's select 111 ohms no problem here's where the problem comes in if we want to go up one more step we run out of range and it will not auto range while it's in the relative mode so you push the button and hold it to get rid of the relative function but it does not go back to auto ranging so you have to hold the range button down until it auto ranges again So let's see how this Digitech does with diode measurement here. So let's uh, just select a, I forget what type of diodes I have here. We'll find out in a second. Okay, obviously I'm connecting it the wrong way. Let's put it back here. Yeah, reads diodes there, no problem. Um, I don't have any f loose uh, LEDs right now, so we'll have to use this. So let's uh, connect this up here. And this is from an old broken headlamp that I had. So let's check uh, this. Yep, lights up red LEDs and shows the voltage. Uh, lights up the white LED, but doesn't show any voltage. Okay, so let's see how this performs on capacitance. Let's select capacitance mode. And we'll use this capacitant, capacitor first. This is a uh, 6 point. 8 nanofarad capacitor and so we'll hold the leads together or close together and then we'll re we will remove the residual capacitance in the meters and this is supposed to be 6.8 so that's a little bit out let's check it on the Bryman I guess I should re-zero the Bryman. Okay, and the measurement is on the Bryman 6.82. So the Digitech is not that accurate down at the bottom, but it's pretty good. Okay, let's check uh, next capacitor. This is a 2.2 microfarad. And the Bryman auto ranges, so I don't need to, uh, when it's in relative mode, so I don't need to re zero the leads there. 2.161. Okay, let's compare that to the Digitech. Two point one six eight. So that's pretty good up in that range. No problem with accuracy there. And then a much bigger capacitor here this one's 2200 microfarad so let's give that a shot and it looks like it's going to take a while to take a reading wow that's taking a long time there we go, finally we get a measurement. And let's see if it changes from the first initial measurement. So 2,455 microfarad. Yeah, okay, so it's fairly stable there. Let's compare that to the Bryman. And Bryman does an auto discharge, which is good. It's a little faster. Actually, it's much faster. And it's showing a slightly different reading, but capacitance measurements on multimeters are not going to agree 100% depending on their measurement method, but that's pretty close. Okay, so let's have a good look at the construction of this. Let's turn it off and turn it over let's take the battery out uh, before we do i want to show you one thing one of the concerns with uh, many inexpensive multimeters is that this bale could break if you put too much force on it it might be not easy to find replacement parts and yes this one will break but it's not a problem it just snaps back in so anyways let's take this apart and have a look at the internals so we'll take the screw out and you will see that 
it is not a cheap screw. It goes into a metal insert and it is captive, so you cannot lose the screw. That's a very nice feature. Uh, this is not the battery it came with. Frankie will not be selling this with batteries because of Hong Kong post rules. He cannot ship anything with batteries inside it. Uh, the battery is connected with is just a very cheap battery snap here. Um, the wires are kind of constrained, so it's kind of hard to get at it, but it works okay. This is a battery holder for two AA batteries. Uh, the non True RMS version of this uses two AA batteries, so you probably get a bit better life out of it. Uh, let's have a look at the inside. So let's take the three screws out that hold it together. And you will notice that these are also screws that go into metal inserts inside the case. So something you don't find on even flukes sometimes or most of the time so let's put this aside let's open it up and it snaps together nicely you can see on the inside of the construction of the case here that there's no shielding so I noticed a few times when I was moving my hands around on certain um, low low uh, current measurements that you would get some noise on here and some high resistance measurements um, a couple of things to note is that uh, the construction has very deep grooves around the outside for for uh, blast protection. Nice nice overlap. The general construction, even with it apart, is still very nice and stiff. Um, of course, you can see here you can see here that it's using. Uh, very small fuses and this fuse here is actually I don't know if this is the correct fuse this this is a prototype or a, a sample this fuse looks like smaller than it should be but both of the fuses are only rated for 250 volt and there's only room here for this cheap little glass fuse so um, I'm not too happy about that that fact that's uh, actually a pretty cheap fuse there uh, you can see on the input protection there's a, a big MOV here across the uh, across the volt input selection. Uh, there is a PTC here, uh, some resistors here. Uh, that's the basic input protection. It's not the best in the world, but it's uh, definitely better than the Unity UT61. At least it has an MOV. Um, the current shunt here it looks a little. It uh, doesn't look pretty, but it, it's, it works. You can see where people have nipped at it to try to adjust it for, for the proper reading on the current range. Um, a little chip on board here. A little bit of epoxy over top. This chip here is the true RMS chip, and it is branded Digitech. So I don't know if that is actually a Digitech or they had it rebranded for, for them by whoever they had made this multimeter for them or if they bought the parts. Uh, this is the buzzer for the continuity. Uh, the overall construction is not too bad. Um, the silk screening is a little bit messy. The solderings all pretty pretty clean. Um, this is strain relieved going through the battery compartment here so uh, let's take the rest of it out. Oh you can also see here that the input jacks are basically as cheaply done as you can make them but at least they're not connected directly to the circuit board when they're connected directly to the circuit board any stress will eventually crack the the soldering here they are stressed relieved a little bit by these straps coming from the jacks going to the board so let's take this completely apart and see how the rest of the construction is bunch of little screws here going into uh, plastic holes so not any metal inserts on the inside but it's not something you should be taking apart regularly if at all oh that wasn't a kind way to treat the LCD oh well it fell out let's get the rest of the board out here
and all the buttons fell out. Okay, so what do we have on this side? Okay, so you can see the construction of the board here. It looks like there is actually a little bit of gold plating on that. Maybe it's hard to tell without an actual test, but yes, there might be some gold plating on the contacts for the uh, selector switch. Not much going on on that side of the board, so nothing really to see there. Here you can see the uh, selector switch. It has what looks to be like maybe beryllium copper contacts here. Nice springiness to them. Here you can see the, uh, the button assemblies. It's a little tiny plastic button with the rubber piece put inside it. Actually, I, I kind of like that construction. That looks kind of neat. So the selector switch is held in place. I'm not going to take that apart, but I can tell you that feels very nice even without the meter together. And generally, not bad construction at all. So let's see how this thing stands being abused a little bit. Let's First of all, this is not abuse. Just measure the AC voltage from the wall plug here. No problem. Put it on volts. DC has no problems. Put it on ohms. It just displays nonsense. Continuity goes a little crazy. Diode check. Capacitance. Temperature. Frequency. This is beyond the uh, probably the input voltage range it wants to see for the uh, frequency measurement. And we'll go back to AC. And it takes a few seconds to recover and no problem. No problem handling the wrong voltages on the other inputs. Okay, what we have here now is the last torture test to see how this meter survives um, some more abuse. This meter is supposed to be rated to be CAT2, 1000 volts. So uh, first of all, let's test it on, well, let's put it on the volt DC so we can see if it reads the voltage anyways. And let's test it at 500 volts first. And we can see the input impedance is 10 mega ohms. It's reading 547 volts output from the voltage tester here. Turn that off. We'll put this up to 1000 volts. Let's see how it handles that. Okay, it's reading overload, but it's still reading the voltage 1042 volts. And any multimeter that I have tested in my, my equipment here is past the 1,000 volt test. But here's the last test I'm going to do. This one killed my UT61E. The UT61E does not have any overvoltage protection on the input that I can see, and it did not survive this test. So let's see if the Digitec passes this final test. I hope it does. I'd like to keep this multimeter. It's uh, a nice little multimeter, but let's let's go. And it's showing overload and the 1042 appears to be the clamping from the MOV and that would uh, be confirmed here. We're down to uh, one mega ohm instead of being 10 mega ohms. Okay, let's turn this off and I'm going to do something to this multimeter that I have never done to any other multimeter before. Let's take this up to 5,000 volts and see what happens. Again, it's still functioning. It's showing 1,045 volts, so the MOV is doing its job. We're still clamping down here at 1.6 mega ohms, so let's turn this off. It seems to have recovered. Let's take this back down to 500 volts and see what it measures.
Okay, well, to me that's very impressive. Here we have a very inexpensive multimeter that uh, has some input protection. It functions very well on all of its functions and it will survive a 5,000 volt input without dying. Now, this only supplies one or two milliamps at 5,000 volts, so uh, it might be a little different if you uh, give it a five or 10,000 volt surge on the input with a few hundred amps behind it, but or a couple of amps at least. But in this case, it survives fine. So this, um, although it's cat rated for cat three, 600 volts, it survived a 5,000 volt input. Uh, I'm not going to try that on the amperage range because the fuses are only rated for 250 volts. It really doesn't matter. They're not blown. This won't be able to blow the fuse. You know what? Let's try it. Why not? Let's see what we can do to this multimeter. So um, under normal usage, I can't see anybody going over a thousand volts. So let's put this up to a thousand volts. We'll turn this on. It's showing overload. Let's put it to AC. Put it back. Survives there. Let's put it to ohms. Not having any problems there. This is showing it's being shorted out at that point. Let's put it to temperature. No problem. Hertz. Okay, let's go back to 1000 volts. And then we'll turn the test off. Put it back to 500 volts. And turn it back on here on the tester. And it's reading the voltage correctly. Okay, so let's turn this off. Uh, let's do a quick summary on this. This multimeter, $46 US shipped. It comes with a couple of test probes, a temperature probe. It's true RMS, AC plus DC. Uh, it will measure almost any function that a, an electronics person might want to uh, measure with, with a multimeter. It has a couple of shortcomings. Uh, number one, if you do a relative function or rel out a, a measurement, it will be stuck in whatever range it's in. It will not auto range. The max minimum also locks it into whatever fixed or it does not auto range during max minimum. Um, but there's not much else to fault about this meter. It's CAT3 600, but don't trust that. So keep this to measuring your wall sockets power supplies inside of electronic equipment and general electronics and you have a good fast versatile meter for a very low price. I would I would recommend this meter without any hesitation.